19 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then remove the wheel. Then with a rubber mallet from the backside, hit the tire, not the rim. That'll help break it free. Okay. Now take off your safety lug nut and remove the wheel. Once the wheel's off, remove the caliper. There's two bolts, two 15 millimeter bolts on the back. There's one down here. One at the top here. Take your caliper and bracket off. Set them aside up here. That way it doesn't put any pressure on the brake hose. Next, there's a T30 Torx screw here. Go ahead and remove that. A lot of times if you don't have an impact gun, an impact screwdriver comes in handy. These can be pretty stuck here. Now you just take your rotor and pull it right off. If it's frozen on here onto the hub, you can hammer in between the studs. Just be careful not to hit them. Perfect. Unplug your ABS sensor. With a pick, I'm going to try and remove this spring here. Okay. Next, there's another spring on the bottom. There's these retainers here, little pin and a spring kind of like a clip. I'm going to press on the spring and turn the pin. That pops it out. Remove that completely. Now this shoe is free. I'm going to pull my pin out through the back and save it for reinstallation. I'm going to do the same to this side. Basically what I'm trying to do is turn this pin so that it matches up with a slot. And once it does, it all pops out. Take the pin out from the back. Now this shoe is free as well. Perfect. Take the two shoes, spread them apart. And try and remove the spring too. Keep that safe as well. I'm going to take a pry bar and put it in here. And basically I'm trying to pry this shoe off of this parking brake lever. There we go. Now you can take this, flip it around, remove it, remove this one as well, and remove your spring, set those aside. Now that we're at this point, we can get access to this ABS wire or ABS sensor, unbolt it with a five millimeter Allen socket, remove the bolt completely. Yours might be extremely rusty, in which case uh, you might need different types of tools, but hopefully yours is in decent condition. So to make this easier, obviously we're replacing this. So I'm going to cut the uh, ABS wire right here. That's going to allow me to remove that piece. This can now twist freely and can be removed. And now you can pop off the boot. Make sure no debris made its way into the hole. Let's install the new one. Slide in your electrical connector through the hole first. Push the boot on all the way, and then try and line up the sensor with its mounting hole. There we go. The wire is going to kind of twist a little bit, but just don't force it too much. It'll be OK. Put in your new bolt. That should come with the ABS sensor. Let's snug it up. Still with the same tool, 5 millimeter Allen. Don't go too tight on this because it's very small, so it can easily break. Now let's plug it in. Make sure it clicks so it's secure. Perfect. I'm going to grease up these indented areas here. That's where the parking brake shoe rides up against the back. And I'm also going to put some grease down here on this uh, parking brake lever, as well as this bottom retainer. Go all the way around, make sure there's grease on both sides. Don't put a lot, uh, but you just want enough to coat it so that the shoes can slide easily when they need to. I'm going to start with this shoe right here. Put this pin through the back side. Put the pin through the back side and make sure it goes through the hole in the shoe. Now you can take this spring retainer here. This is what's going to lock in your pin. 
It's got a hole on one side, and then the other side is a cutout that fits the pin in only one direction. So bring that through. And this is, this is where I like to use locking pliers or needle nose pliers, whatever you might have. There we go. There we go. That's locked in too. Now take this spring, make sure you bring it up and through over the parking brake lever, hook it onto that hole. And now I take a pair of locking pliers, hook them on really tight stretch the uh, spring into the other hole, make sure it's seated, let go. That one's fully seated. I'm gonna take a screwdriver on this side and just pop it into its hole. Perfect. Now for the top, you have this adjuster here and what you wanna do is take it apart and clean it. It's not very dirty or corroded. This one's uh, in good condition, but I still suggest cleaning it, clean out this old grease in here. Pop out both ends and uh, I'll clean them up in the wire brush. Take some grease, grease up the threads now that this is all clean, and thread it in. Thread it into the uh, rest of this adjuster here. The grease will automatically kind of work its way in and then the excess will come out. And I like to take the excess, put it in on the other side. And that's where this piece goes. Now that this is all greased up, Let's get it in between those two shoes. Now you want to take this, slide it in between these two shoes. Perfect. Now take this spring. This one is slightly damaged, but um, I don't have a new one, so I'll have to reuse this one. It still, still holds the pads together properly, so it's not an issue. And with a screwdriver, I'm going to expand it, hook it in. Perfect. Go ahead and apply some anti to this hub. I'm going to use the spray kind, so I'm covering the parking brake shoes. That way I don't get any on the uh, braking material. If you have the brushed kind, that one might be a little bit better in this situation. Now take your rotor, line up the securing screw with the hole on the hub and put that in. This was a T30 Torx bit. This doesn't have to be extremely tight. It just has to be snug enough to hold the rotor in place for you. Perfect. Now slide the caliper on. Make sure the pads go over the rotor just like that. Line it up in the back and let's install the two bolts. Okay, start on this one. And then the top one, start on the top one, and let's snug them up. Snug these up, and then torque them to 89 foot-pounds. 89. 89. Reinstall your wheel. foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Double check it. 